Okay. So this is a, uh, the first thing that we should understand that the noise and the disturbance are input because they are injected to the block diagram. Yeah. Now the difference between the disturbance and the noise in the amplitude and in the frequency nature or the frequency characteristic. So here, if I'm plotting, let's say, a certain frequency domain, and if we agree that this is the threshold between the, the high and the low uh, frequency, then in general, the disturbance is characterized at low frequency. So the disturbance are characterized at low frequency. And you know, low, high, this is a matter of magnitude, huh? order of magnitude. So sometimes for your application, low frequencies can be one hertz. Sometimes it can be 50 hertz. So this depends on the frequency. Let's assume this is omega naught. Good. Example for this disturbance. The wind direction or speed. Or speed. Now, in general, the wind direction and speed change in high frequency or low frequency? In low frequency. So this is a disturbance, yes? Yes or no? Oh, yes. Okay, another example. Now, if you are studying in your room, huh? so simply uh, let us assume that you are uh, studying here, and the room was empty, the door was closed. Now, your brother or your father or your mother opened the door and closed it. This is a disturbance or a noise? Um, sorry. Okay, now, do they open and close, 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 or just open it and close it? Just one time, open and so, close. So this is a disturbance. <laughs> Why? Because simply it's not characterized in high frequency, yeah? But if they intend to noise you or get you, uh, let's say, you know, to behave as a noise, in this case, they will open and close, open and close, open and close very, very fast, huh? Simply this will be what? A noise, actually, yeah? Okay. okay, another thing. While you are measuring a signal, while you are measuring a signal, let's assume that uh, this is uh, R, L, C, and uh, I'm measuring uh, the voltage or the current. Let's assume I'm measuring the current. So for that, I need to use a meter. Uh, let's assume that I'm measuring uh, the current here. Now here, uh, the measurement has a noise or the disturbance? Uh, noise, of course. Noise, yeah, noise. So simply, this can be seen if you are plotting uh, the current in an oscilloscope, uh, let us assume that uh, this is the, the one ampere, and simply you can see something like that, huh? Correct? I think once you did that in the, in the lab, you measure the, either the voltage or the, the current, and the value was almost at, let assume, let assume this is the, uh, 10 volt and this is 10 ohm to make it easy for me and this 0 0.1 milli henry so i don't care about this one and this is that i will have one ampere correct yeah but simply here i'm having what i'm having a noise with that so the noise characterized where the noise is characterized as so here the noise is characterized at high frequency region. Now, for me only, I will 
put assumption on the frequency, not on the magnitude or the amplitude. So I don't care if the disturbance was small or large. I don't care if the noise was small or large. Only I'm putting assumption on what? On the frequency. Yes? If you notice last time when we were discussing the disturbance ejection and the noise attenuation, we say that if we can manage to design our controller such that it has a high amplitude at uh, the, the low frequency and low amplitude at the high frequency, in this case, I can manage to do the two cases, which is the disturbance addiction and the noise attenuation. If we still remember, I think, when we wrote the error signal E of S, it was the stiff function S of S multiplied by R of S, then here plus S of S, G of S, here I think D of S, then here I have minus, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Minus S, S of S. C value. of S, the complementary system function, N of S. And we, so this is a negative and this is a plus. It depends yeah, on the, the block diagram I wrote, which one is the plus, which one is the minus. I think I use this one to be the negative. Yeah. Uh, of and S this of one. Well, okay. So uh, actually, it will be the same because I'm, minim I'm minimizing the term, huh? not the additive value of the terms. Yep. So I don't care about the sign in general. And by the way, by the way, why all the time I'm telling you I don't care about the sign of the disturbance? Because let's assume that I'm having the following configuration. Here a controller. Then here I'm having a disturbance. And after that I'm having, let's assume, the plant. And this is the disturbance, this is the input, this is the output, and this is the plant, let's assume it's G of S. Now, in the end of the day, this is the actuation signal, yes or no? This is the input U of T to the plant, yeah? Now, if this one plus, this means that the disturbance is supporting my input, yes or no? Example, if you are going in the same direction of the wind, then the wind is supporting your movement or resisting your movement. It's supporting. Movement. It's supporting, yeah? Now, if this one is minus, then this means that the disturbance is resisting my movement. Yes or no? Yeah, sure. Same thing. If I'm moving against the direction of the wind, in this case, the wind is resisting my motion or my movement or supporting my movement. Resisting my movement. So, yeah, in general, what I, I, I don't know if the disturbance is supporting me or resisting me. Yes. So this means that I can use without loss of generality either plus or minus. Yeah. I don't care. In the end of the day, I don't care. In the end of the day, I need to reject this or uh, disturbance. Huh? Whether this disturbance is supporting me or resisting me, I need to reject it. Why I need to reject it? because I don't have any information about. I cannot control. If I can control, this will be an input, correct? Yeah? If I can control the disturbance, this will be input, not a disturbance. Good? Okay. So simply last time we said that C of S plus S of S is equal to one. Yeah? So simply, if I minimize one, I will maximize the other one. Huh? So simply, this means that here I'm having a conflict. How I can minimize the error due to the input, due to the, uh, due to the disturbance, due to the noise, if I'm having a conflict condition here. Now, the key answer is where in the frequency domain. Here, I think it was the, the loop gain, which is the GC. G, the magnitude of GCD, because the S was 1 over 1 plus uh, GCG. So if I increase the magnitude of the loop gain, I will reduce the sensitivity. In this case, in the low frequency here, 
because I don't have noise. There is no noise. I don't care about C if it's increased, but I care about S and I need it to be what reduced. Yeah. The same thing here in the high frequency region. I don't care about the D. Why? Because D is here, not here. I will never. Uh, let's say uh, have a disturbance in the high frequency region. So in this case, I don't care about S. If this one increase, I only care about C to be what reduced. Good. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Doctor. OK, thank you very much. OK, so last time was speaking about the sensitivity right, of the transfer function uh, to a change of parameter, either certain transfer function, certain parameter and so on. So let's uh, recall from there. So here I will start from. Recalling the definition of the sensitivity, let's assume as T with respect to G. So simply how I can read that. This means that what will happen to the closed loop transfer function if the open loop transfer function change due to what? How the open loop transfer function will change uh, due to the environment, for example, uh, due to the uh, aging effect, for example. Or, for example, due to modeling error. Uh, for that, let let assume that I'm having uh, the following open loop control. This is the controller. Let's assume it's K and let's assume here. This is the plant and this plant. Let's assume it has uh, uh, I will choose this one. OK, one over S. S plus A. It has a parameter called A. This is the input, the R. This is the output, the Y. So this is the plant. And this is the controller. Yeah. Now I need to study what will happen to the closed loop if the open loop is changing, or I need to study what will happen to the closed loop if the parameter A is changing or what will happen to the closed loop if the parameter K is changing. So simply here I need to study the variation. What will happen to the certain transfer function if certain parameter or another transfer function is changing? So simply this one can be defined as the system sensitivity is the ratio of percent change in the closed loop transfer function to percentage change in the open loop transfer function. So simply this is the. By assumption what we call the closed loop transfer function. And this is what we call it here by assumption the open loop a transfer function good so simply mathematically this can be represented as stg will equal to partial t or delta t over t over delta g over g and simply this can be written as delta t over delta G and I will have here G over T. Now if delta if variation is very small. Go to zero, then we know that this can be approximately equal to partial T. Partial G. G over T. Good. Yeah. So again. We can write this one as partial T over T. This is the S. 
TG equal partial T over T over partial G over G. And this actually can be read as partial lin T by partial lin G, correct? Yeah. If I need to do the partial lin, it will be delta T or partial T over T. And if I need to do the partial uh, lin G, it will be partial G uh, over G. Good. Now, in general, what I need, I need the absolute value of this one to be very small. In general, I need the absolute value of S T G to be very small. So low value, this means that the system is less sensitive to the variation. Good. Low value means that the system is less sensitive to a parameter variation. Yeah. So sometime we are interested. Let's see here. Sometime. We are interested in studying the variation of certain parameter, not all the transfer function. Are interested in study what will happen if certain parameter. Let's say here for this example, huh? let's say here A is changing. What will happen if a certain parameter is changing to what? Let's assume that I need to study the S T with respect to A. Now this one, according to the definition, this will equal to what? Delta T with respect to Delta A, then I'm having what? A over T, or I can use the partial T, partial A, A over T, or I can use partial lin T with respect to partial lin A. Yes? Now, who can give me here t of s equal to what? This one, who can give me t of s, the full loop transfer function equal to what? Mm. Uh, Doctor, let's uh, feedback. Or... No, no, just, just a minute, just a minute, no, no, no. Here, the closed loop is the open loop. There's no closed loop, actually. So T of S is equal G of S, correct? Or G, or the plant multiplied by what? By the, okay. by the, okay. Huh? Now, the definition of the T of S was what? Do you remember T of S was what? Y over what? R. Over R. So Y over R equal to what? Okay. Uh, over s multiplied by s plus a yeah yes so did i connect a feedback no there's something else if i'm telling you that this is a system in feedback control system this one is not yes now here you have what here you have the the r here here you have the r here you have the y so the definition of the closed loop transfer function is the relation between the output over the input. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So y over r equal k over s multiplied by s plus. So now what I need, I need to study what will happen to the closed loop control system if certain parameter a is changing. If certain parameter a is changing. Yeah. 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 Good. Now, let's see. This is a rational function. Yes or no? Yes, yes. So this equal n of s comma a, let's assume, over d of s comma a, let's assume. Huh? Yes. yes, it has, yes, yes. it's a function of s and a, yeah? So simply now, 
This means that I can write this one as S T A will equal partial len N over D by partial len A. Yes or no? Yes. Now, len N over D can be simplified to be len N minus len D. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so this is something we know. This will be partial len of n minus partial len of d over what? Partial len of a. So s t alpha a, a here, a, I'm using a equal to can be simplified to be partial len. N by partial len A minus partial len D by partial len A. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is what? The first one in terms of the S. S and A. Yes or no? This one can be read as S and A. Correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. Mind. This is what? Uh, S. Uh... S. D. A. Yes. Yes. OK. Now someone will say why you are using that or why you are doing that in from here. I can calculate it. Correct from here. I say yes. But simply here you need to do what? You need to differentiate a rational function. But here. You need to differentiate a polynomial, which is more easy for you to differentiate rational function or a polynomial. Polynomial. A polynomial. Yes. So let's do that because I'm too old to 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 do the uh, the differentiation uh, with a rational function. Uh, I, I like the polynomials. Okay. So n here is equal to what? According to our example here, n equal to what? Okay. And D equal to what? S uh, multiplied by S plus Good. A. So here, let's make a room for this one and say that N for this example equal to K and D for this example equal to S, S plus A. Now, who can evaluate the first one here? This one. Zero. This, zero, which is, you will say that it's A over N. Partial and partial A, correct? Yes. Yes. So this is A over K and N has no A. So this will be what? Zero, correct? Because correct. this one is zero, yeah? So now what I'm having? Minus. The second one, you will say it's what? A over D. Partial D will speak to partial a. So now let's see. This will equal to what? Minus A over S. S plus A. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Then partial D with respect to partial A. Can you? Can you do this for me? This will equal to what? Partial D with respect to partial A equal to what? Mm. Uh, S. Uh, S. 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 Thank you. Yes, it's S because I'm differentiating with respect to what? To the A. So this is S squared plus A S. So this one is zero because there's no A inside it and only I'm having uh, A. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm differentiating with respect to what? To the A, not with respect to S. So here what I should put? S. Yeah. So if I need to calculate the value, I need to specify what? To specify the uh, the S and the nominal value for the A. So let S equal to zero, for example, and A equal to uh, or no, Z one. Let's assume S equal to one and A equal to one for simplicity. So calculate S T A as absolute value in this case. 
So it will be minus one over two, I think. So this would be one over two. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Now let's see. Uh, let's see here. Simply A, by the way, A, I don't know. A, it can be anything. Huh? This can be a resistor. And the resistor can be a certain value, nominal value. But due to the accuracy, due to the aging effect, due to the environment, it's subject to change. It's subject to change. So here I need to, to study, to understand what will happen for my system, for the performance of my system, if this parameter is changing, and I need this value to be what? To be very small. I need this value to be what? To be very small. OK, now. Let's discuss another example, and for that I will select the following example. Uh, and I will use. Almost. Two configuration. Except that I will change. The location of the parameter of interest. So let's assume this is a key. And here I'm having. One. Over S. S plus one. Negative feedback. This is the R. This is the Y. And. Another system. Almost the same system. One over S, S plus one. But here I will put K in the feedback. Here K, I will put it where in the feedback. This is a negative here. This is the R and this is the Y. Yeah. And I need to calculate the sensitivity of the closed loop transfer function to a change in the parameter K. So I need to find that sensitivity S of the closed loop transfer function I do the change on the parameter K here. And the same thing I need to do that here. S T K. Here equal to what? And here equal to what? Then I will compare and get some conclusion, let's say. So the first thing, if I need to, to evaluate this one, what I need, I need to find the closed loop transfer function. Yes or no? Yeah? T, T of S. Now, who will help me with T of S equal to what? Uh, K over S. Mm-hmm. Uh, the S plus one plus K. Oh. No so here, cool. yeah, here I'm having K over S square plus, plus S plus, plus K. K. This is Y over R. And here, uh, one over S. No, one over S square plus S plus K. Correct. Yeah. Good. So here and here, the characteristic equation are the same. Yes or no? Yeah. Here and here, the characteristic equation are the same. Yeah. yeah. So what's the difference here? K in the feedback and here K in where? In the forward path, let's say, yeah? in the forward path. Yes. Yeah. OK, now. Here, what I will use, I will use the same thing as, or let's use the same color here. 
I will use this one. So uh, this one is N over D. Yeah, so this will be the S N with respect to K minus S D with respect to K. So this will equal to what? So the first one is what? D lin D lin L D lin L N okay and D lin K okay K minus D lin D and D lin K alright so the first one is actually what we call it what uh, this one is uh, the K over N huh? K over N and N is one. Partial K, so the first one is one, correct? The first one I will do it here for you. This actually is K over N, partial N, partial K, minus K over D, partial D over partial K. So here I'm having N is equal to K and D is equal S square plus S plus K. So this would be K over K multiplied by one minus K over D, which is the S square plus S plus K. Partial D with respect to partial K is one. So this will equal minus K over S square plus S plus K. Yes or no? Yeah, so as absolute value, as absolute value, this will equal k over s square plus s plus k as absolute value. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Now, who who will help me with the the second one? This example here. Huh? Now t we have t here, and this one is equal n over d. So now let's evaluate. This will equal K over N, which is the K, huh? multiply by partial N with respect to partial K. Do you have any K in N? Here, do you have any K in N? No. Uh, so no, this would be zero, huh? Zero. Okay. So this would be zero. Minus. Then I'm having <coughs> K over D. K over d s square plus s plus k yeah yep multiply by one multiply by uh, uh one huh? now just a minute here what i'm having here i'm having k over d K over D. And here I'm having one, huh? Oh, no, stuck in my company's with Did I make a mistake here? Uh, KG, this is the, just a minute. The closed loop transfer function here is correct. Yeah, it's one over S square plus S. And here it is K over S square plus S plus K. Uh, okay, now this will be D. Okay, K over D. Multiply by uh, K1, huh? Yeah. Ah, okay, this is the mistake. <laughs> I figured out the mistake. Here I forget to include the one, huh? Here I'm having one, not zero. Correct? Here, here. Here I'm having one minus. Yeah? Otherwise, the, both will be the same, huh? And I, I will be in big, big, big trouble, actually. <laughs> to highlight something, huh? This is one. Okay. Yes? Do, do you notice that I forget to here to write the one, huh? 
Sorry for that. Otherwise, both will be the same, and this is physically not correct. So this will be one minus k over s square plus s plus k. And here, what I'm getting? I'm getting the s t k as absolute value equal to minus k over s square plus s plus k. Yeah. Now, <coughs> uh, let's assume that, um, let's simplify it, let's simplify it. This will equal to what? Who, who will simplify this one for me? Uh, minus s squared plus s plus k. Yeah, yeah, this be minus. Where is that? Oh, okay. No, thank there's you. Not. No, no, no minus. Huh? I could, even if there is minus minus, I don't care. It's absolute value in the end of the day. Huh? So if you are toggling this sign and this sign, I don't care. Because at the end of the day, what I'm getting, I'm getting the absolute value. Yeah? Okay. Now, who will conclude? Which one is the highest? This one or this one? Mm. Mm. This one? Uh, the one? Mm. Okay. Another thing. See. Here, for any value of s, if I increase k, this one will be close to 1, yes? Yes. And this one will be close to 0, yes? Yes. So, simply, this means that, this means that, if you are designing a control system, if you are designing a control system, then, then, the material that you are using in the feedback must be accurate, or let's say must be expensive, because of the tolerance, huh? which means that you are not allowed to do any error in the feedback, although you can do whatever you want in the feed forward because this one we can correct. Yes? This is actually the sensor in the end of the day. Yes or no? Yes. So if the sensor, if the sensor is very low quality, this is very dangerous. Why? Because any variation in the sensor will cause what? High sensitivity. Yes? Correct? Yes. Good. So simply in the feedback, you must design uh, the system to be accurate in the feedback or from material which is high accuracy. So simply here I can write a note for you. The feedback must be designed from material with high accuracy. Good, which means that the sensors should be accurate. Anything in the feedback, this path, huh? this is the feedback path. Anything in the feedback must be designed from a material with high accuracy. In the end of the day, the feedback is something physics, sensor, transducer, yes? So simply, there you should pay attention to use, let's say, a material with high accuracy, even if you pay more, but simply this will, uh, let's say, enhance the overall sensitivity of the closed loop control system. Understood the point? Understood the point? Oh, it's another okay. Another example. 
I will give you another example and I will recall uh, this example here. Let's assume that you are controlling a certain plant with a very simple controller, proportional control. And this system has a parameter on that. And here I will put this system on a feedback. The previous one was this the system we discussed it without a feedback. Now I'll discuss it with a feedback to highlight something else. Okay. And <coughs> here I need to, to study or calculate the sensitivity of the closed loop transfer function to a changes in a parameter A. And I need to discuss how I can reduce this sensitivity. So calculate S T with respect to what? To the A. So the first thing T is equal Y over R and this one who can calculate it? To me. K over S square. So this is actually the K. Over of S square. S square plus. Plus S square plus K. Plus K. Okay. So I will use the rational function. This is the N. This is the N. This is the D. So I will use the S T A is equal S N A minus S uh, D A. Of course, you can use it from here. Huh? You can say it's A over T partial T with respect to A. It will be the same. Correct. But as I told you that differentiating a rational function is more difficult than differentiation, differentiating of the what, polynomial. So this one will equal to what? This will equal A over N, partial N, partial A, minus A over D, partial D, partial A. So the first one who can help me with that, A over N is A over K. Partial N with respect to partial A. Do you see any A in N? Do you see any A inside the N? Oh. Huh? No. no. No, so this multiply by zero, minus. A over D, so this is the A over the S square plus AS plus K. Partial D with respect to partial A equal to what? S. S. So this will equal as absolute value. This will equal minus a s over s square plus a s plus k. Now, if I need to calculate a value, I need to give you the value of the s, let's assume it's one, the value of the a, nominal value, let's assume it's two, and the value of the k, let's assume it's three. Who can calculate it? Now, you will say this will equal uh, k minus a is 2, S is 2, 2 over A S square is 1 plus 2 plus 3. Yeah? This is equal to what? 2 over 6, correct? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Good. Now see, for any value of S, and A. If K is increased, what will happen to STA? If I increase K, what will happen to the, to the sensitivity? Decreasing. Decreasing, yes? Yes. Yes. So simply this means that I'm enhancing the sensitivity of the closed loop transfer function by what? By controlling, by feedback control, correct? Do you remember uh, the first example here we discussed? I think in this page it was. This one? Yeah? The same, uh, the same. It was the same. But simply there is no feedback. And here we reach to be what? If I increase K, nothing will happen. No? This where is it? Uh, we, when we calculate, ah, there's no K inside it, correct? Yes. 
So changing K will never enhance or improve the sensitivity of the open loop transfer function. But for the closed loop transfer function, closed loop transfer function, increasing K will enhance the sensitivity. Good. So until now, what we have? Until now, the feedback can reject the disturbance, can attenuate the noise, can improve the sensitivity, yes or no? And this is the advantage, let's say, uh, of the closed loop control system that I can reject the disturbance, I can attenuate the noise, and I can improve the, the sensitivity. Good. Another example. Do you have any question? Do you have any question? Mm. Hamad Majdi, Abdul Rahim Salam. Huh? Do you have any question? Sorry. Saad Mahmoud Ahmed Rawajdi. Okay. Tariq Ayman Abdul Karim. No? Time. So uh, let's take this quiz. Are you ready? Uh, do you need it to be difficult or or simple? Simple. Simple. Okay. And uh, this is the quiz to be very simple. Okay. Given. Uh, the two systems. This is the first one. This is the R, this is the Y, and this is the G. And the second system this is the G. And this is the R and I and negative feedback here. And I need you to calculate the S T G here equal to what? And the S T G here equal to what? And let me make a room for you for the submission in the e-learning. OK, you will take this one five minutes only five minutes. OK. And let me make it. And let me okay. log in. And we are today here. So add activity. Let assignment. And this will be quiz number two. And uh, uh, the deadline is at, uh, let's say, nine. 40, 9.30, yeah? 9.25, now. Yeah, 9.25. Oh, no access from now. A due date is today at 9.25.
اوكي دكتور استفى السؤال من عندنا مش مبين اوكي جاست امين اند سيف اند ديسبلي اند ليتس ريتيرن باك تو ذس يا ذس وان So simply, I'm giving you two systems. One is open loop, one is a closed loop, and I need you to calculate the sensitivity of the uh, T with respect to G. This is a cheesecake, actually. Yes? Uh, use whatever you want. You can use... Uh, G over T partial T respect to partial G. This is the best one to use it, huh? because G is not written in term of any uh, variable, so you should use this one. Yeah, you have four minutes. Okay. And here I will write the next example. When I finish, I will, you will finish also. So the second example. Did you finish? Is it time? You have one minute. <clears throat> so uh, let's return back to continue the lecture. So, Doctor, we started at 9:20, so we lost a few minutes. Can you open the door a little bit so we can finish? 
Okay. Okay. Edit setting. And uh, let's do this one for another three minutes. Seven, yeah. And that's the same back here. Okay. Okay. So let's return back here. Uh, now, here I'm having what? I'm having a system, which is a linear time universe system uh, described in uh, state space representation. This is the matrix A, the matrix B, the matrix C, and I don't have any matrix D. And I need to find the sensitivity of the steady state error due to change in alpha if u is instead because if i need to calculate the steady state error i must specify the input who can help me with that who can help me what i should do so here what i need to calculate as what e steady state with respect to what Alpha. Ah. Who will help me and I will give one point. Doctor, Okay. Okay. So simply you are thinking that the first thing I would find T of S, which is the C, the S I minus A in bears B. Then but then but what he E of S not what T of S. E of S by definition is R of S minus Y of S. So but not but then the limit. The S equals zero, the E of so S. E steady state will equal the limit when S go to zero, S, E, e of, of S. S. Yeah, and if I still remember, I told you that E of S in this case, in this case will equal to what? One plus C A inverse B, correct? Yes. Yeah, it should be like this, huh? because simply if I do the math here, this will be one minus T of S all multiply by R of S. Now, if I do the math, S will eat R of S and I will end up with what? With one minus T of zero. So one minus C minus A inverse B. So one plus C A inverse B. So I need to calculate this one. Huh? So can you help me with that to calculate it? So this will equal, so E is to the state will equal one plus C, one, one, A inverse. Zero, one minus three. So the determinant, so the determinant is one over three. Yeah. So one, over three multiplied by the inverse of this one. What I will do, I will switch those. Minus six. Minus six, zero, and toggle the sign for those. Minus, minus one, one, minus three, uh, three plus three, sorry. Multiply by what? By B, which is the zero alpha. alpha. Now, if I do the, the math, what I will get? E steady state will equal one minus alpha over three, or this will equal three, three minus alpha. Now, I need to do this one. Yeah. So this one, uh, which is the S east state with respect to, to alpha. So this will be minus one, the alpha over E of S. Alpha over E steady state, yeah? Partial E steady state with respect to partial alpha. Why use this one? Because alpha here, I don't care. So this will be alpha over three 
minus alpha over three multiplied by minus one. Minus one. Yeah. So this will equal to what? Minus minus a three, three alpha, alpha of over three, three minus alpha. minus alpha. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if alpha equal to one. If alpha equal to one, then this is state as absolute value of e to the state respect to alpha equal to one. Minus a three minus. over two. So this will be three over two, correct? Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yep. Another example. Or it's enough. Hmm. Another example. OK, let's discuss another example before going to something else. Huh? ايه دكتور بدي اسالك في انه نطلع بالاسئله اللي سجستد اللي بعثت لنا اياهم في اول سؤال بيقول لك انه نطلع الايرور بتاع ال امم تعال اول سؤال في سجستد في سؤال بدي اسالك عنه بتاع ايرور Uh, this one missing gain formula. This one. Uh, two find the U of S. So so simply in this case, what I, I will do, I will put, I will pick off the error here. The loop is not changing. Yeah. Mm. Then I'm having the path. Do I have path? Let's see. This is the first one. Do you see it? G. At the first path, yes. Uh -huh. The second path, G1, G2, H2, E, yes. Uh -huh. So this cheesecake actually. يعني بتصير E على R وبنطلع بين ال E وال R نعمل ال هاي الفورمولا. Yeah. I will pick this one off. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which means that I will put here uh, an output arrow. I will mm -hmm. pick it off. Then I will ask myself, can I go from R to the E? Yes, this is the first one. This is the second one. Yeah. The D of S ma bikun ila ta'atir al E. Now, just a minute. When you discuss a transfer function, you are discussing between input and output. Yes. Yes. So here, the input is what is the R. The output is what is the E. This oh. is the first one. Then you will plus the input is D, and the output is what. E. is E. So you have also another transfer function here. So E, uh -huh. so this one is relevant actually for what we are discussing now, but whatever. E of S is equal to transfer function. The first one, T1 of S is due to the R plus T2 of S is due to the D. Yes? Yeah? Yes. So you are using the same now, missing gain formula. The loops will never change. The determinant will never change. What will change only the the paths and the cofactor. Okay. Good. يعني يعني بتصير ال e زي كأنها بدل ال y اللي هي output وبنطلع كل تأثير input عليها. Yes, yes, yes. And I told you that if I need anything, I should pick it off. Huh? Okay. Now. Uh, دكتور قبل قبل ما نحل الاكزامبل بس سؤال اكزامبل اللي مش بدنا نكتب انت حاجاتك تكتب اكزامبل اه اه دكتور وانا بسلم بالكويز اتاخرت 20 ثانيه ابعثوا على الايميل لا هو سلمته اعطاني انه ليت 20 ثانيه ارجع ابعث كمان ايميل نو جست اذا اذا عملت سبمشن ساكت تمام Okay. Now, uh, so until now we discuss what the feedback, 
the feedback, uh, the effect of the feedback on disturbance reduction, noise attenuation, and on the sensitivity, correct? And on the error signal, the first one uh, was the error signal, correct? Or did, we did not discuss the error signal, I think. Huh? So let's discuss the, the error signal, and for that I will use, uh, I will use this one. Okay, this example. So let's assume we're having the the following configuration. One is the open loop control system. And the same configuration, but with a, a feedback control system. And I need to study what will happen uh, or what the effect of the feedback on the steady state error or in the error in general. So this is the R, this is the Y, this is the R, this is the Y. And now, in general, we said that the error is defined by R minus Y. The same thing here, the error is equal R minus Y. Now, if I need to find the E of S, then I can do one minus Y over R multiplied by the R. So I need to find Y over R. Y over R here, who can help me with that? This cheesecake, K over tau S plus one. And here I'm having the same, the same plant. So now who can help me for this one? Y over R equal to what? K over tau S plus one plus K, I think. Yeah. Yes. Good. Now, you know that E to the state is equal to the limit when S go to zero of S E of S under the assumption I'm having unit step. The same thing here, R of S is equal one over S, which is the unit step. So now if I calculate here, this will equal to what? Simply R will eat R and I will end up with one minus K over tau S plus one at S equal to zero. So this will equal two. 1 minus k, correct? Yeah. Here, e is the state which will equal the limit when s go to 0, s e of s, the s will eat the r, and I will end up with 1 minus k over tau s plus 1 plus k at S equal to zero, so I will end up with one. My here I'm ending up with one, yeah. Okay, uh, with zero. One, oh, good. One minus k over one plus k, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So this one will equal to one over one plus k if I simplify it, correct? Yeah. Yes. The zero I'm end up in, uh, end up with one minus k over one plus k. If I simplified, I will end up with one one plus k. Okay. Now let's see. If k equal to one, the error here equal to what? If k is equal to one, then e to the state will equal to what? Zero. Zero. If k here is equal to one, then E still state will equal to what? One over two. One over two. Okay. Now, which is better? This one or this one? This one or this one? Negative feedback. This one. Which one is better? The open loop or the closed loop? If the K1 will open loop of that. If the K1. But simply, let's see. K is a parameter in the 
So this is actually all is the plant. Let us assume that this is all is the is the plant. So K can be a parameter that due to the aging, due to the environment, it will change. So let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen. So simply someone will say to to be fair more in comparison, you can say here not K equal to one, make it 100 because simply in this case it will be 101. Yeah. There are 101. Simply it's not zero, but close to zero. So now let's see what will happen if K change by 10%. Let's assume K equal Kn plus delta K. And let's assume delta K is equal 10%. Right? In this case, the error equal to what? So E is equal to equal 1 minus K, which is Kn plus delta K. And this will equal delta K, correct? Because by assumption Kn is equal to what? To 1. Yes, so any variation on K appear directly where? On the east state. So any variation on K, automatically I can see it where? In east state. Now let's see here what will happen. If I'm changing, let's K by 10%. So let's assume either plus or minus. Huh? Let's take the two cases here. Let's assume K is equal to Kn plus minus delta K. And let's assume delta K is equal 10% of Kn. So I'm having two choices. The first one is K1 is equal 100 minus 10, which is 90. Or K2, which equal to what? Uh, 100 plus 10, which equal 110. Okay. Now, is this state in the first case equal to what? In case number one. 1 over 90. And in the case 2, equal to what? Is this state equal 1 over 110? Now, if I compare the actual error here, if I calculate the math here, this will equal almost 1. Let's do the math here. Let's do the math and for the math. So 1 over 101 equal to almost uh, 0 0.009. Now if I calculate it here, 1 over 90, this will equal to what? 0, and this one is almost equal 0 0.01, correct? This will equal to what? 0 0.011. And here, 1 over 110, this will equal 0 0.009, which almost equals 0 0.01, which almost equals 0 0.01. So what you can conclude, what you can conclude. The closed loop system enhance the steady state error, correct? Yes. You see here the open loop in the open loop configuration. Anything happened to the plant, you can see it directly. Yes. Yeah. Whatever the value of K, whatever the value of the K. If there's a variation on K due to the environment, due to the aging, due to the any reason, simply the steel state error is directly affected by what? By the variation. However, in the closed loop configuration, this effect is minimized. Yeah. So simply on the nominal value, the best that we can design is using the nominal value. There is almost 0 0.01. If I'm having a variation, there still has the same value, which is almost 0 0.01, which means that if you design the closed loop control system, then you will guarantee that the steady state error will be in certain 
level as you designed using the nominal value if you are using what a feedback if you are using a feedback understood yes yes do you have any question do you have any question no so let's assume the following let's assume that we have the same configuration here k here is a over s plus b and the same configuration but i will use a feedback Now, this is a first order system, correct? This is a first order system. Yeah. Who can give me here the DC gain and uh, the closed loop time constant? Who can give me the DC gain? And the closed loop? time constant which is the tau hmm? y over r equal to what y over r equal to what uh, K A over S plus B. So A K over S plus B. Who can give me the DC gain and who can give me the time constant? DC gain over A K over B. Yeah, DC gain. Is the value of the y over r at S equal to zero and this equal A K over B. The time constant tau. Oh. One over B. Thank you. One over B. Yes, because if I need to find this again that I'm constant, I must write it in term of KDC over tau S plus one. So KDC is equal. I need to put this value equal to one. I must divide by B. So KDC equal AK, AK, AK over B and the time constant equal one over B. OK, thank you. Now, if I change K, can I change the time constant? Now, if I need to plot this one with time, y of t, the instant response, simply the DC gain is will be something here that's shaping the, the output, and this value is a k over b. And this will be the time constant, which uh, actually calculated according to 1 over b. And this will be 1 minus exponential of minus 1. Here, uh, multiply by a k over b is the this value here. If I project this value on the time scale, I will get the tau. Huh? I will get the tau. So now if I change K, the gain, can I, can I speed up the response? Or slow down the response changing K? No. Yes, can I? No. No. So simply this means that the open loop cannot shape the transit response. Yeah. In general, huh? in general, the open loop cannot shape the transit response if I'm not doing zero balls cancellation. And here I'm using a K, which is impossible to do a zero balls cancellation. So simply here, the, the, the open loop cannot shape the transit response. Now, what about here? What about here? Who can give me the closed loop transfer function Y over R equal to what here? K, yeah. A K. S plus B plus K A. Yes. Uh, but that's a key. Yeah, thank you. This one, huh? Yes. Okay, who can give me the DC again equal to what here? K DC equal to what here? AK over B plus AK. 
So A K over B plus A K. Who can give me the the tau, the time constant here? Equal to one. Correct. In order to do that, I must rewrite the transfer function into K D C over <coughs> tau s plus one <coughs> so i should divide by this factor correct yeah so yes. now can i change the transit response yes yes so similarly this means that the feedback control system can shape the transit response correct so simply here i can write the Closed loop control system can shape or change the transit response. Yeah, yes, can shape the transient response. Good. Do you have any question? Mm. Do you have any question? I can speed up the response. I can slow down the response. I can change the nature of the response. For example, for example, let's assume that I'm having the the following configuration. Let's change this one from one to something. Uh, okay. Who can give me the, the closed loop uh, transfer function here equal to what? Ah. Correct? Yes? Yes. If K equal to 4, Zeta equal to what? Uh. Ah. Uh, uh, one. Oh. one. So simply the system is critically done. The roots are what? Real, negative, and equal. Correct? If I plot the intuitive response, it will be something like that. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if K is greater than 4, what I will get? Uh, K greater than 4, uh, it will be under dam. Complex conjugate, correct? I would get something like that. Did I change that the, the response? Yes or no? Yes. Did I shape the transit response? Yes, I shaped the transit response. If K less than four, what I will get? Zeta over dam. Greater than one. The over dam. So I'm changing the transit response. Yes or no? Yes. By what? By feedback, correct? Because yes. of the feedback. If there's no feedback, if there's no feedback, if this one is never there, I cannot change. By the way, the open loop is unstable. Yes? Yes. Oh, let's say critical stable. I'm having zero at the origin. Good. And you know that if the system uh, is unstable or critical stable, there is no steady state value. 
So similarly, there is no uh, time constant because the definition of the time constant, you know the definition of the time constant? The value at which 1 minus exponential minus 1, this is for first order system, huh? and this would be the tau. So imagine that you have the following response. This one has no time constant, correct? Yes, the same thing here. If you have the following response, this one has a fixed amplitude, fixed frequency. It will never uh, have uh, or has a, a time constant. Did I answer your question? How the feedback control system is shaping the transit response? Yes. OK, do you have another question? No, so uh, next week is our exams, correct? I think it will be on where? Uh, it will be 30. Yes. 30, 30, 30. So it will be next Monday. Not tomorrow. Next Monday, correct? Yes. OK, good. Uh, if you don't have any question, this will be the end of our lecture. Uh, please solve uh, the selected problem. Uh, if you face any difficulties, uh, you can contact me, but please, before contacting me, try to solve. Show me your solution so I can track your, uh, your mistake, let's say. Huh? So until the next lecture, uh, keep distance, stay safe, and yeah, the graphic. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. Well, I